One after the other, they were presented before him and he called their names, but each one had a partner. And at the end of it all, Adam turns to God and he says, well, they've all got partners, where's mine? <laughs> he wanted someone to communicate with. And God said, it's not good for man to dwell alone. He's realized, he knew from the very beginning that wasn't, his creation wasn't completed with man. It's not good for man to dwell alone. He, he enjoyed the animals. It was great. I'm sure he enjoyed naming them and laughing at the different types. But he didn't have someone to communicate with himself. People joke, don't they? They say, what's so nice about a dog, having a dog is it can't answer back. <laughs> but truthfully, that's no good, is it? We have been given a tremendously precious gift of communication. And God's ultimate communication to us was to present us with the word, Jesus. Whom we have seen, we have handled, we have touched. And in 1 John 1, verses 1 to 3, we get the description of all the different types of communication that God used to present Jesus to us. And I'm reading from the NLT. We proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen. So you've heard one level of communication you've heard and you've seen. We saw him with our own eyes and touched with our own hands. He is the word of life. This one who is life itself was revealed to us and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the Father and then he was revealed to us. We proclaim to you that we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. He is the word of life. And I'm sure you've all know, you've all been told about the different methods of communication. We all, we all have different means of communication. We have, um, we have body language, we have eye contact, we have words. But the wonderful thing is that God gave us every opportunity with Jesus Christ to understand him from every aspect that we needed to understand him. We've seen, we've heard, we've touched. And he says, we're sharing it with you so that you will understand as well. You will have that same knowledge just as if you had been there at the time like we were. You have the same understanding of Jesus. Exactly the same by the Spirit of God. And the most important thing that we communicate, when we communicate, is that we communicate the truth. And the truth must be not only with the words, it must be with the life, it must be with everything about us, our facial expression, our eyes, everything. And when you get someone who is totally true to themselves, and they speak, their words have such power because that's what Jesus was. He was the expression of the word. And why he was full of grace and truth is because he was 
true totally to himself. There was no dissimulation. There was no hidden motive. There was no hidden agenda. There was nothing like that. The whole power of his communication was that he was himself. The whole power. And we must make sure that as men and women of faith, people get every single communication from us so that it comes out as truth. So powerful, so powerful when it comes out like that. People love my husband's ministry. Why do they love it? Because he just says it the way it is. He hasn't got any dissimulation. He's not trying to hide what he thinks. So often we try and hide what we think. So often we, oh, you've got to be politically correct at this point in time. He's never politically correct. Never. <laughs> Always says it, what he thinks. And you know, people find that so refreshing, so amazing. They can't believe a man of God would do that. But there's so much fake. I was just talking to someone earlier. Where at the begin before the service began to net today, I said there's so much on the television that you, it's so plastic. That's because it's not all. That all you're getting different signals. You're getting a signal that, well, he's putting on a show. It's not real. It's not what he is in his normal life. So many people say of my husband, what you are in the pulpit, you are in your everyday life. That's what, it's, that's communication. That's the truth really bearing home. That's why God called Jesus the Word. Because it's so powerful. When it's every message that you receive from that person is what they mean. Is what they mean. They say in the police nowadays that uh, they no longer rely on um, the lie, lie tests. Well, I've forgotten what them. Uh, lie detector. They found them to be very unreliable because people can um, train themselves because they train. They, do, they, they measure the heartbeat and they measure the amount of person's sweats and things like that. People can train themselves not to react to those things so that it doesn't work. But they have found that there is always something in the manner of a person that can tell you when they're lying. There's a little downward movement of the eyes, little twitch of the mouth, whatever it is, there is something that if you're a very keen observer of men and women, you can tell when they're lying. And they find that so much more reliable than a lie detector. So every single thing has to mean what you say. Your life, your words, and your children, and your wife, and your husband mustn't get a double message from you. However much you say sweet things with your mouth, they'll be able to tell what the rest of the message is.